everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to the Dice Tower Week in Review. This is a video where we talk about all the videos we did last week, uh, giving you quick summaries of each one, and then you have a chance, if you say, hey, I want to learn more, you can click the description, or in the description there's a link you can click and see more about those particular games. Let's go. Hey, hey, everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and here's what I did last week. So I took a look at the uh, insert from Go7 Gaming for Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. It's a wonderful insert. I didn't give it a number rating, but it is uh, great quality construction-wise. It uh, puts away nicely. It takes care of managing everything that comes inside the original box, I think. Jaws of the Lion really needs a better insert, and I think this is a good one. There are a couple of negatives. It has some box lift. It's not inexpensive. But if you're looking for a quality insert replacement for that, this is a good one. Then some game reviews. I reviewed Thrive, which I rate a 6 out of 10. This is a uh, an abstract strategy game in which you are uh, trying to capture your opponent's pieces, and you make your pieces better over time by putting little pegs in them, denoting where your piece can move. It's very lovely looking. Uh, the game just didn't quite grab me as much as I would hope, uh, as I was hoping it would. And uh, it feels uh, also like it lacks a little bit of maybe originality. There's also an expansion in there that you won't get if you buy the game just from, you know, without the Kickstarter stuff. But that didn't really add anything. I thought it detracted a little bit, in fact. So that's what I thought of that one. I was hoping for a little more oomph. I reviewed Detective Gaze of the Ghost. I rate this an 8 out of 10. This is a little sort of whodunit in a cardboard, in a, in a card box. And I really liked it. Uh, they build a little 3D, you know, crime scene for you that works very nicely. You are playing together uh, with everybody else trying to figure out what happened. And it's about 45 minutes or an hour. So it's short, but it's fun. And then you can pack it up and pass it along also. So that's nice. And then I reviewed with the rest of the fellas Stardew Valley, which I rated an 8 out of 10. It is a game that I think uh, you're going to want to be a big fan of the video game to really get the most out of it. It's very lucky. It's very long. But I think for people who straddle the line between sort of just mass market games and maybe hobby gamers, if you can oscillate between those two and you like the video game, which I do, then this is uh, not a cash grab. It's a game that's well put together. Some thought has gone into it and it can be very tense and it's very beautiful. So... There you go, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Hey everyone, Chris here. I was part of two reviews this week. First, as part of the Foursquares review for Stardew Valley. This is a game that I was not a fan of. I gave it a six because I, I just don't want to personally come back to it, but I see a lot of good in it. I think the more experience you have with the video game, the more you're going to really enjoy it. I have zero experience, so keep that in mind. And then the other game that we reviewed this week was CO2, Second Chance. This is a Vital Asserta cooperative game. I quite like this one a lot. It is pure information, very cooperative. Uh, I gave this one an 8. I reviewed it with my wife Wendy, who actually gave it a 9. So got a seal of excellence from us. So that's been my week. Hi everyone, my name's Michael from the Nerd Shelves. And this week, Judy and I reviewed Darkness. Darkness is a card game where all players start with the same hand of colored cards. And in every round, players are using those colored cards to bid on artifacts and relics, which give them victory points. But the bidding happens over three phases. So in each phase, you are bluffing and trying to trick your opponents into thinking which artifacts and relics you are going for. It is a really quick, fun card game. And if you like games with bluffing, I think you will like Darkness. So go check it out. We give it a 7 out of 10. Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delisio, And this week I reviewed one game. I reviewed Stardew Valley. I gave this a 7 out of 10. I think Stardew Valley does a lot of things well. But there are some issues I have with it. I, there's some component quality issues. There's a significant amount of randomness. It's probably a little bit too long for what it is. But overall, I really feel like this is a game that is one that was made with love. If you are a fan of the video game, and I really didn't have a lot of a background with it, but if you're a fan of the video game, I have a feeling like you'll really like the board game as long as you're okay with a significant amount of luck. All right, well, that's it for me this week. 
Let's keep it moving. Okay, so for me, first of all, Sumatra. This is a game from Reiner Canizia about collecting things for various points on a trip that you're taking pictures. It's a typical scoring points. I don't like the production. I feel like it actually works against understanding how the game plays. And the game itself wasn't very interesting also. Mystic Monkeys. I wanted to like this one more than I did because ah, it's... It sounds fun, but it's an abstract strategy game, monkeys versus monkeys, but with a huge dose of random luck in it. I didn't like it. Star do, or I'm sorry, Dino's Not Assembled. This is a kid's game, fantastic kid's game for uh, collecting bones, turning them in to make dinosaurs. Very much geared toward the younger set, but if they like dinosaurs, they'll like this game. Stardew Valley. Everyone at the Dice Tower reviewed this one this week. I reviewed it with my kids and I liked it. Here's the thing, I like it despite the flaws in it. There is so much randomness in this game. It is a long cooperative game and yet I enjoyed myself and yet it was entertaining. A lot of variety. I think fans of Stardew Valley will love the game. If you are a gamer, well you better watch the review to see if that's something you'd want. Fayum. This is another one. Fayum is a game from Friedman Freeze. It's another game where I think there's some flaws in the game. It's really tactical and stuff, but and it's a little experimental. But the game is fun. You're collecting cards, using these cards to build an engine. A lot of games do that, but here every card in the game practically is different. Haunted Mansion. This is a set collection game where you're collecting ghosts to get points. Uh, unlike um, Sumatra, though, this one has a fun theme, very straightforward, a good game for families, a welcoming game. I like it a lot. Genotype. Genotype is a science game that's fun. Of course, it's also a genius game. And I just said the same thing in a row twice about uh, making pea plants and finding the right pea plants and mixing genes and such. It's a worker placement, dice drafting style game, which has some unique things. It's a tight game, but one I found to be fun. I, I retook really a look at Fantasy Realms, a little card game. 53 cards, a ton of game in those cards. WizKids re released it. Really great game. And I took a look at the expansion, the Cursed Horde. So this adds some more suits to the original game and also adds some cursed items that you can use if you want to. You lose points, but they give you great things. A really fun expansion. And then Unforgiven, a great two-player game about the trial of Mary Surratt based on the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. It's very similar to Seven Wonders Duel in many ways, but I like it better, actually. It is just a fantastic, historical, great two-player game. Lest you think I'm getting too positive, I also did eight games I dislike. Uh, all these games are rated five or less, just not ones I enjoyed at all. Tim uh, and I did Delay of Game El Grande. There's some audio issues, but hopefully you enjoy the conversation despite those where we talk about a great area control game. I did my top ten action point games. We did another fun shoots and marbles game. Uh, I did five more great games with Melissa McCack. Uh, boring unboxing, crowd surfing. Lots of videos went up this week. I hope you enjoyed them all. More coming this week from the Dice Tower. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Week in Review. <laughs>